So what the bloody hell's happened to the cooking bell heist? We're going to be talking about that here today, why it's taken so long. I made a video showcasing this to you, telling you about this new heist that's coming two months ago, back in December, the beginning of December, okay? And now here we are, bloody halfway through February, and we're still like, where is it? So in this video, I'm going to show you absolutely everything we know about this heist so far, as well as later on, we'll talk about when we think this thing is coming and how much money we're going to get for completing the heist or raid. Let's talk about it. So first of all, why should you be excited about this heist? This raid, I should say. It's not a heist. It's technically a raid. Is there a difference? Who the bloody hell knows? But it's definitely a raid. It is called the Cluckin' Bell Farm Raid. But why should you get excited or why people are excited? Number one, the new Hellfire Interceptor. The new police car, as you can see right here. This is a vehicle that was leaked months ago. I showcased it in my video months ago when I was talking about this raid. And I think people have just been itching to get their hands on that car since that came out. I literally see it in my comments almost daily. People saying, when is that car coming? So that's one of the first reasons people are excited. Number two, it's a new heist, right? It's a new raid on, uh, on GTA 5 Online. And we know you can do it solo. Now, this is not going to be paying solo money like the KO Perico heist. I can definitely tell you that. But it's also also not going to be as bad, I would say, as the union depository contract. I think it's going to be a nice sweet spot in the middle, maybe a five, six hundred thousand dollar payday. The reason I say that is it has five setup missions. The union depository only has two. But you may be thinking the KO Perico has like five setup missions. It does, but those things take forever. But we don't know how long these are going to be yet, to be fair. But you don't have to fly to another island, KO Perico, and it doesn't, it's probably not going to take as long. But we're going to be talking about all of those setup missions here in a second. So before we get into that, the details on all of the setup missions, what they're all called, talking to you about all the options you have because there is going to be multiple options we already know if you can choose to be stealthy or aggressive but there's way more options than that including weapons cars all of that stuff so i feel like to start this off let's walk you through the exact full timeline of this heist so if you don't want spoilers definitely what look away now uh, but we're going to be looking at this for a couple minutes here okay so first things first you're going to get a phone call from vincent now, this is going to be a different conversation depending on what you've done in GTA 5 Online. And what I mean by this is like if you've done the casino missions or if you haven't done them, you'll get a different set of vocabulary. So this is the first conversation that you could possibly have with him. Hey, it's Vincent. It gives me supreme pleasure to report I am no longer mall security guard over at Rockford Plaza. In fact, these days... I'm in a position to offer you a lucrative, although unorthodox opportunity to make some money and sabotage one of your long-standing adversaries. If you're interested, meet me at the Vespucci police station. This is the second conversation that you could possibly have Hello, with him. This is Vincent. I haven't seen you since, uh... <laughs> I unwillingly retired from my former post as head of security over at the Diamond Casino. I'd like to offer you a lucrative, albeit unorthodox, opportunity to make some money and sabotage one of your long-standing adversaries. If you're interested, meet me at the Vespucci police station. And this is another conversation you could have with him if you haven't done any missions and hadn't had contact Hello, with him before. We haven't had the pleasure of acquainting ourselves quite yet, but I'd like to offer you a lucrative, albeit unorthodox, opportunity to make some money and sabotage one of your long-standing adversaries. If you're interested, meet me at the police precinct by the Vespucci canals. Okay, so next up after this phone call, as you can see right here, you're gonna get a V on the map at the police station. So you're gonna wanna head on over to that location. But as you can see right here, it is indeed called the Clucking Bell Farm Raid. And it is a contact mission, not a heist. With the help of Officer Vincent Effenberger, raid the cartel's operation in the Clucking Bell factory in Polito Bay. And there is some spoilers, or not spoilers, some teasers. So you can see his name is Vincent Effenberger. And some of you with a keen eye may have noticed some teasers that we've got recently. Let me show you. So both of these teasers come with the salvage yard robbery. Uh, the first one is going to be for the gangbanger robbery. And you can see right here on the brute force password thing you have to do. It says effing who. Now that is clearly a play on the name 
of Vincent Effenberger, and the name is Effin Who. So that was the first teaser we've got confirming this new raid. The second teaser comes in the form of the drag races. When the drag races came out, you can see right here, a clucking bell truck is leaving the clucking bell farm. Something a lot of people with the keen eye did see, some people didn't. But those are two teasers that we've had so far. And a lot of you guys did tell me about those. So thank you to you in the comments section. You guys are always fantastic. Uh, but you did mention that when the trailer came out for the drag racing. Okay, so once you get to the police station, you'll see right here, press E or press A or X or whatever it is on whatever you're playing on. Uh, to start the cooking bell farm raid. Now, this is the first cutscene, so I'm just going to play it all the way now through just in case you guys haven't seen it. In general aversion to the law in all seriousness. Your countenance is quite discernible, and there are certain of my consociates who would take it upon themselves to exercise their right to lethal force were they to encounter you in person. But it's good to meet you, my friend. Vincent, the LSPD's newest recruit. Let's take a walk. Who would take it upon themselves to exercise their right to lethal force were they to encounter you in person. But it's good to cross paths with you again, my friend. Half the head of security at the Diamond this isn't exactly what I had in mind, but it's still a long way from a mall cop, right? Let's take a walk. Relax. I'm a cop, but I'm not a cop. This is just where the universe put me right now. I mean, I have my path and you have yours. And quite frankly, I don't give a damn about your antics out there. In fact, we may be able to assist each other. I mean, check this out. You see that misguided individual? How do you think he's gotten away with selling drugs in front of that burger shop? Very conspicuously for 10 years now. In front of the largest department in the city. He cuts them in. Effenberger, you copy? Yo, Effenberger. I copy. Worst last name ever, dude. <laughs> I mean, Effen what? <laughs> anyway, when you got five, we all need some effin' coffee down here on Dick's. And don't forget the effin' cream and sugar. Copy that. All these motherfuckers. Huh? I'm out here getting coffee for cops on the take. And that guy over there is only a modicum of the issue. There's a new cartel running a large-scale cocaine operation out of the Cluck and Bell factory in Polito Bay. And being no doubt, the cops, they're not only turning a blind eye, they're actively facilitating. If you ask me, the cartel and the cops can both go to hell, preferably on the back of the same bullet. I'm talking about a surgical strike, man. Taking out the whole operation. That's why I came to you. Let's go somewhere a bit more unfrequented. I understand your motivation in these matters. If you raid that factory, anything you find is yours to keep. But this isn't about the drugs for me. This is about these assholes running the biggest protection racket in the state. That's the kind of status quo I cannot abide. As far as my part, I can provide all the intel you need. Records, names, locations. We will need to educate ourselves on the factory, though. Gather materials so you can attack it with style and aptitude. Ding fucking dong, Officer Effenberger. We're effing falling asleep over here. Get us some effing coffee. Copy that. I'm on my way. Think about it. If anybody deserves to be fucked with, it's these guys. Can I count you in? Excellent. Now on to the first order of business. Acquire some funds. And fortuitously, we have files on some money laundering operations not far from here. The department allows them to operate for a share of the profits. I suggest we take a more proactive stance. <laughs> Time to do what you do. I'll call you. Let me take these fucking assholes their coffee. All right, so that is the first mission, the introduction to Vincent. And as you can see, there was three people in the background. So you can do up to four people in this, like most heist raids in this game. Uh, but this little scene right here that's playing, uh, this is just the exit. So once you've spoken to Vincent, this is the little cutscene you're going to get. Okay, so we don't have any information in between what we just saw and what I'm about to show you, which is the finale of this heist. So I want to fill you guys in here just a little bit. 
So as you can see in this scene right here, we have the Cluckin Bell Farm Raid and we have six things in total to complete. The last one being the finale, which is the scene of the crime you can see there, which is going to be the raid on the Cluckin Bell Farm. The first one here you can see is Slush Fund. Now Slush Fund is the very first mission. That is your setup mission. And in this mission, we know from leaked information from the game files that this mission is going to be where you have to go to a money laundering uh, operation and steal the money. And that money that you're going to steal is going to fund the setup for this operation. Next up, as you can see there, we have breaking and entering. Now, I have a lot of information that, like I say, that has come from just leaked sources online. I'm just showing you some data leaks of what this is. So I'm going to be assuming which one is which in this. Uh, which one makes the most sense, but it's all accurate information, but I'm just not sure which mission it is. So for breaking and entering, I'm going to assume that is going to be your gear, your outfits, your armor, things like that. And just like the weapons and vehicles in this raid, you're going to have three options. Basically, easy, medium, and hard is going to be the difficulty of the missions. But obviously, if you choose the easy one, you're going to get weapons that aren't as good. And this is actually called the Marabunta. So I'm assuming that is just like a local gang that you're going to go to and steal weapons from them and armor and vehicles. And if you choose that easier option, it will be an easier mission, but you're going to get lesser weapons and armor and vehicles. The next tier is professional. And with the professionals in this tier, you're going to get like medium armor and the same thing with weapons. You're going to get medium weapons. Same thing with vehicles. You'll get like medium vehicles and it'll just be a medium level of difficulty. And then last but not least, you have the military, right? So you're going to get the best heavy armor, the best heavy weapons and the best heavy vehicles. This is going to be much more difficult uh, setup missions, but you're going to have much better outcome for when you're doing the heist. Now, with that in mind, like I've said right here, we have breaking and entering, which I assume is going to be for the body armor. And you're going to get to choose the Marabunta, which is easy, the professional, which is medium, and the military, which is difficult. And for the sake of just making it easy to understand here, I'm just going to say easy, medium, and difficult. And then we have the concealed weapon setup mission, which I've already just discussed. And it's going to be easy, medium, or hard. You get to choose which one of those three you want to do. And depending on which one you do, you're either going to get lesser weapons or or military grade weapons. And by the looks of it as well, I want to mention, it looks like you can do easy for weapons and then let's say hard for, for the armor. So you could choose to just go to that easy one, which is that gang and get easy weapons and like pistols and things. And then you can choose to go to the military to get the armor with heavy armor. It looks like you can pick and choose. And then we have hit and run, which we can only assume is going to be the option for vehicle. And this is going to be the same thing. And something that they say in the in-game files is a getaway vehicle can be stolen from three different gangs. The vehicle selected can be used for the Cluckin' Bell farm raid. And it does say this for the armor and it does say this for weapons as well. So you're basically going to get three different options for each tier. Okay, so the fifth one here is disorganized crime. So this one is where you get to choose, I'm assuming this is right before the finale, you get to choose how you're going to do this heist. Are you going to do it silent and stealthy and sneaky? Or are you going to go in guns a blazing? We've already seen the cutscenes, as you can see right here for the two different options. The one you're watching right here is the silent and sneaky option. It looks like we're going to come in on the train inside of a crate. And then the crate's going to be lifted off of the train into the warehouse. And then we're going to climb out of the crate in the warehouse and just be super stealthy. Whereas this option that you can see right here, as soon as we get there, there's people ready with guns and they just start shooting at us right away. So one of the things they say as far as stealthy and sneaky here is to destroy the delivery trucks. Now, I'm assuming this is because we want them to have to use the train as a delivery instead of having the trucks come in. That's the whole thing with the train coming in. Um, and you have two options. You can either silence and stealthily sabotage the delivery trucks. I'm not sure exactly what that's going to be like. I don't know how you would sabotage a delivery truck, maybe pop the tires on it or something. I don't know. Oh no, we actually, we do know this. So I'm just realizing this as I'm making this video. So this clip right here, I showed you back in December, I believe. And it was just showing the animation for something, but we didn't know what it was for because we couldn't see it. Fast forward until now we have this clip 
which is showing you what it is we were actually doing, what that animation is for. And as you can see, we are pulling out like the hoses. We don't know if that's a brakes hose or some sort of hydraulic fluid hose or no, I don't know what bloody hose it is, but it's a hose. So that it's just clicked in my head, man. That clip we just saw is the sabotage. So that is the stealthy, sneaky sabotage. But if you don't do it that way, you can do it the aggressive way, which is blowing up or exploding these clucking bell trucks. But doing so will put the cartel on high alert. So when you start this raid, they'll be ready for you. So the way you will choose between these three, two, three tiers, because as you can see right here, it just says like the mission. It doesn't show you which one you want to choose, the easy, medium, or hard one. Well, you actually do that through text. So you'll be texting with Vincent and he, you will tell him which one you want to do. So when you sabotage the truck like we just saw right here, you are going to get a notification that says the trucks have been sabotaged, the CCT footage has been wiped, and the factory was not alerted. So you're going to basically sneak in there, do what we just saw in this video, and then you're going to have to go to a computer, which I have that for you right here as well. Take a look at this. So you can basically go over, you're going to wipe the CCT footage once you've taken out the trucks, and then it'll say you will be able to sneak in during the raid. So those are your two options. You can either blow up these trucks, or you can go in, sabotage them, go to the computer, wipe the CCT footage, and that way, once we start up this raid, you'll be able to do it silent and sneaky. So the sixth option is the finale, the scene of the crime. We've already discussed that now. So once you've done the sabotage missions we just talked about, then you'll do what I've talked about earlier, which is you'll sneak in on this crate. You'll come in on the train and it'll drop you off, yada, yada, yada. Or you can come in guns are blazing and do it that way. And once you have completed it and you've brought whatever it is we're stealing or we've just sabotaged back to the city, this is going to be your final cutscene. Excellent work. Mission accomplished. Now to the vital matter of payment. As I'm sure you can appreciate, there are certain transactions I can't be party to as an officer of the law. But if I've learned anything from my consociates on the LSPD, it's how to look the other way. Now remember, as far as I'm concerned, you can hit that factory as often as you'd like. As long as you're giving me reasons to keep looking the other way, I'm happy. As you can see from my choice of transportation, my fortunes at the LSPD are also improving. Just got these babies in, fresh off the line. <laughs> Guess who picked one up? Until next time, let's disassociate. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the clucking bell raid. Everything we know so far. I basically feel like we can just play that in our head right now. We've literally just gone through the entire thing. We discovered in my brain, as I was talking to you, exactly the time frame of this. So now I feel like I'm going to be able to do this with my eyes closed before it even comes out. So with that in mind, how much money do we think we're going to make for this raid? Now, it is going to be different. It's going to be better and more money, I would guarantee than the union depository and that pays around what 300,000 it is 300,000 so 300,000 for the union depository and let's say 900 for the KO let's say a million for the KO right even though people are going to say it's more like 900 these days since the buff or nerf so I think in between those so if you got three for the union nine for the KO I'm saying six I think this is going to pay 600,000 I don't know the replayability I'm assuming it's going to be at least an hour cooldown. Maybe they'll do a two hour cooldown since the solo union is an hour cooldown. The solo KO is three hours cooldown. Again, stick it right in the middle, two hour cooldown. It'll be interesting. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. But that is all of the information we have so far for this clucking bell raid. When do I think it's coming? I've been telling you guys for the longest time, I think it's coming at the end of February, which is this month. Is it going to be pushed back till March? I mean, I say pushed back. They haven't even acknowledged it yet um, but I don't know if it's going to be March or February I still I still have a little hope in my heart that it's going to be this month but let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below hopefully this video was useful for you or entertaining at least um because we can't do it yet so probably not useful but let me know either way what you think in the comment section down below I hope you're all having a fantastic weekend and I'll see you guys as always tomorrow with a brand new video goodbye <laughs>